Welcome to this next video in the playlist on field theory. In this video, what we're going to talk about is splitting fields, a really important concept. Okay, so let's begin then with the definition of a splitting field. So, what do we need as the setup here? Okay, so we need to have some field, capital F, which we're talking about. Okay, so we'll have some field, capital F here, and we need a polynomial, which is from the ring of polynomials with coefficients in this field, capital F. So we'll call this polynomial P of X here. Okay, so P of X is going to be an element of the ring of polynomials uh, where the coefficients are from the field capital F. Okay, so you've got a field capital F and then you've got some polynomial from the ring of polynomials uh, where the coefficients are from the field capital F. Okay, so we're now ready to define the splitting field of this polynomial P of X over the field capital F. And I should say, this polynomial P of X, we will assume that it is a non-constant and certainly a non-zero polynomial. So we'll assume that it's degree one or higher. Okay, so I'll just add that in. P of X, we will assume, is not equal to the zero polynomial. Okay, neither is it equal to a unit. Okay, so it's not equal to a constant polynomial because, of course, we know that in a ring of polynomials over a field, it's the constant polynomials that are the units. Okay, so it's some non-constant polynomial uh, which we uh, know will not be a unit in the ring of polynomials over the field. Okay, so we're making those assumptions. Okay, so we're now ready to define what is meant by the splitting field of this polynomial P of X over the field capital F. So we'll call the splitting field capital K. Okay, and first and foremost, it is just a field extension of capital F. So this here, capital K, this is going to be the splitting field. So K is our splitting field, and its full title will be the splitting field of the polynomial P of X over the field capital F. Okay, so the splitting field of the polynomial P of X over the field capital F. And first and foremost, as I say, it's just a field extension of the initial field capital F. Now, this needs to be a special field extension of capital F though. It needs to obey two important properties. So property number one is that the polynomial P of X splits into degree one polynomials completely in the ring of polynomials over uh, the splitting field, capital K. So P of X, and I'll just put splits, okay, uh, and in fact I'll put a little bit extra, splits into degree one factors, okay, completely in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field, so where you've got coefficients from the splitting field, capital K. Okay, that is the absolutely key property, but there is another line that I need to add into this definition. Okay, so the polynomial P of X splits into degree one factors in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field. And just to make this absolutely plain then, uh, let's write out P of X um, explicitly. So let's have P of X a degree N polynomial, let's say. So it'll look something like this, P0 plus P1 X plus P2 X squared plus all the way up to Pn, x to the n here, and all of these Pi's are going to be elements of the field, capital F, okay? And now, in this ring of polynomials over the splitting field, capital K, this is going to be writable. You can factorize it down into a bunch of degree one factors. So how should I do this? So I'll call the constant terms A's and the non, uh, well, the degree one coefficient um, B. So we'll have A1 plus B1X times A2 plus B2X, and then it will go on all the way up to we have a n plus b n x. Again, of course, uh, we'll need n lots of these degree one factors in order for the degree of the product of all of these to be the same as the degree of the original polynomial, i.e. n here. Okay, so here's our initial polynomial, which is an element of the ring of polynomials over the field capital F, and here we have now factored it down into uh, degree one factors and this is going to work in the ring of polynomials over the um, splitting field, capital K. So all of these coefficients, the AIs and the BIs, they're all going to be elements of the splitting field, uh, capital K. Okay, so 
the polynomial p of x then must split down into degree 1 factors in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field. That's condition number one, and there is another condition that I need to add on here, an important condition that people often forget, which is that it's the smallest field in which this occurs. Okay, and how do you actually rigorously state that? Well, the way you rigorously state that is that if you take any proper subfield of k, so, uh, and uh, for all, let's say, e, which is a proper subfield of k, so e is a proper subfield of k, and of course it will still be a field extension of f. So you take something that is a field extension of f, but which is a proper subfield of k, so strictly smaller than k, basically, strictly contained within k, then the polynomial p of x will not split completely into degree 1 factors in the ring of polynomials over this smaller uh, field e. Okay, so how should I put that uh, then? Okay, uh, so for all um, E, which is a proper subfield of K, and it's still a field extension of F, uh, then um, it must be the case that P of X, then P of X doesn't uh, split in the ring of polynomials over this proper subfield of the splitting uh, field. Okay, then P of X doesn't split in the ring of polynomials uh, with coefficients from E. Okay, so that is an important constraint that you also need to remember to put here. Okay, so a splitting field then is a field extension of the initial field capital F such that the polynomial is going to split into degree 1 factors in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field and also for any proper subfield of the splitting field. So any E which is a proper subfield of capital K but still a field extension of capital F then if you consider the polynomial p of x within the ring of polynomials over this proper subfield of the splitting field, then you will not be able to write p of x completely in degree 1 factors in this way that you can in the ring of polynomials in the splitting field. That's how we rigorously capture the fact that the splitting field is going to be the smallest field extension of f in which the polynomial p of x splits into this product of degree 1 factors. Okay, right. So, um, we have two very important things that we now need to prove. Firstly, we need to prove that there is always going to exist a splitting field. So we need to prove existence of a splitting field. And then what I want to prove is uniqueness of a splitting field, that there is only one splitting field uh, for a polynomial over a field, capital F, up to isomorphism. So up to the fact that you can use different symbols for the elements of your uh, splitting field. Okay, so it's just like differential equations. We want to prove existence and uniqueness. Okay, now, uh, in the next video we will prove existence, and then in the video after that we will prove uniqueness. But just uh, in this first video, what I now want to show you is a little bit of uh, nomenclature, a little bit of notation that we're going to uh, use um, not only in our future videos in this playlist in our field theory, but also in our proof of the existence and uniqueness. So just a little bit more notation is what I'd like to go over now. Okay, right. So let's suppose that we have proven the existence and uniqueness of splitting fields. Okay, we're going to prove that. Um, now what I want to show you is some notation with regards to splitting fields. So Let's say we have indeed selected some polynomial, p of x, which is a polynomial in the ring of polynomials over the field f, and we've constructed this unique splitting field, and that's why people often talk about the splitting field for a polynomial, p of x over the field f, not a splitting field, because it is unique. So there is the splitting field of a uh, polynomial over a field f. Okay, in this splitting field then, the polynomial is going to factor down into these degree 1 factors, often called linear factors. The degree 1 factors are often called linear factors. Um, now, uh, the, the, I've written this like so, but there's often a way that people prefer to write out um, the polynomial in terms of its degree 1 factors in this way. Okay, and the way that people prefer to write it out is they prefer to pull these coefficients in front of the x to the power of 1 term out so that we've always got uh, the
the coefficient of x as being 1, and then we've just got a constant term, okay, from the uh, splitting field capital K. So that is, of course, possible to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull B1 out, we're going to pull B2 out, and we're going to pull Bn out, and of course we're going to have to uh, multiply all of the constant terms here by the multiplicative inverses of uh, B1, B2, Bn, etc., which of course will exist because we're assuming that these are not equal to 0. Okay, right, so the way that we would more normally write this is like so. We'd have the B1, B2, all the way up to Bn out the front, and then we'd have, uh, and I'll put the x now at the front, and then we'd have x plus A1 over B1, where this just means A1 multiplied by the multiplicative inverse of B1. I assume you're familiar with that notation. Okay, and then we'll have x plus A2 over B2, A2 times the multiplicative inverse of B2, and then of course it will go all the way up to x plus uh, An over Bn, like so. Now the question then becomes, this B1, B2, all the way up to Bn, can I make any comment about what that is equal to? Well my claim is that I can. This is actually going to be equal to the leading coefficient Pn from my original polynomial here, okay, written out explicitly here. Okay, now why can I conclude? Sorry, why can I conclude that? Well, remember, f is just a subfield of k, so Pn is certainly a valid member of k. Okay, uh, and also look at this. When I multiply all of these together, the leading coefficient that I'm going to get in front of the x to the n term is just going to be equal to 1. So if I want this to correctly equal this, then I'm going to have to have this coefficient out the front, which will multiply by my x to the n term equal to pn. So I can make the comment that p1, sorry, b1 times b2 all the way up to times bn is going to equal pn. Okay, right. Now, we modify this further we consider these bits. Now, of course, these things here, these are going to, well, their additive inverses are going to be the roots of the polynomial P of X um, in the splitting field capital K. So if you imagine putting in the additive inverse of A1, B1 here, of course, it would give you zero, uh, and then it wouldn't matter what all the others were, uh, when you actually work this out in the field capital K, the splitting field capital K, you'd always get zero as the answer. So indeed, all of these things are going to, um, their additive inverses are going to be roots of the polynomial in the splitting field. And that means that the way that we more normally write this is like so. So we'd more normally write this like so, x um, minus alpha 1, where this really means x plus the additive inverse of alpha 1, x minus alpha 2, all the way up to x minus alpha n, where these things, alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n, are now the roots of the polynomial. So they're the additive inverses of these things. So alpha 1 would be the additive inverse of a1 over b1, alpha 2 would be the additive inverse of a2 over b2, all the way up to alpha n would be the additive inverse of a n, b n. Now there's one final modification that we're going to make to this, which is the fact that some of these factors, these degree 1 factors, might be repeated. So, for instance, alpha 1 and alpha 2 might just be the same element, and therefore I've got a repeated factor here. Okay, uh, so what I can now do is collect those together. So the final way that we write this, and I'll just put the pn there that I missed out. Okay, that's now my uh, b1, b2, all the way up to bn, we've agreed that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is collect together the factors that appear more than once. Okay, so uh, we're now going to finally write then our factorization into linear factors in this way, like so, Pn times x minus alpha 1 to the n1 times x minus alpha 2 to the n2 all the way up to, and that might be x minus alpha k. Okay, so it might not go all the way up to alpha n now because, as I say, you've grouped some of them together here. Okay, so these are now distinct roots rather than ones where it's repeated. Okay, so k is going to be less than or equal to n. Okay, and then it'll be n k here. And I'm sorry I've used the same notation there. I might just change uh, this to m so that I'm not confusing you because we used n for the degree of the polynomial, whereas these don't have anything to do with it, they're just other natural numbers. Okay, so all of these, these mi's, they're all greater than or equal to 1, we're assuming. Okay, 
now, uh, some final notation then on nomenclature. Um, we call uh, these alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha k, they are called the roots, we've already discussed that. And we call these powers that the linear factor with that as a root appears in, um, appears to in the uh, degree 1 factorization here in the splitting field uh, for this polynomial, we call those the multiplicities of the roots. Okay, so m1 is the multiplicity, and I'll just put this, multiplicity of the root alpha 1. Multiplicity of alpha 1. So m1 is the multiplicity of alpha 1, and just by changing that 1 into an i, I can have the more general statement here that mi is the multiplicity of alpha i. Okay, so those powers are called the multiplicity of the roots. So the root alpha 1 has multiplicity m1, the root alpha 2 has the multiplicity m2, all the way up to the root alpha k having the multiplicity mk here. Okay, so that's a new piece of nomenclature, the multiplicity of a root. And finally, uh, the concept then of a repeated root. Okay, a repeated root is one where the multiplicity is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so for instance, if this was x minus alpha 1 to the power of 2, then we call uh, this a repeated root. We'd call alpha 1 a repeated root. Whereas a simple root is a root where the multiplicity is equal to 1. So repeated root has multiplicity greater than or equal to 2. So mi will be greater than or equal to 2. A simple root is one where the multiplicity of that root is equal to 1. Oh, and I'm sorry, this has gone off the page. Let me just bring this back up. So mi is going to equal 1 if your uh, root alpha i is a simple root. Okay, so that's all the nomenclature that I want to introduce you to then. The multiplicity of a root and the concept of a repeated root or and a simple root. Okay, so this is the way then that we normally would write a degree 1 factorization, or rather the splitting up into a degree 1 factorization of a polynomial in its splitting field. You have the leading coefficient out the front, and then you have these degree 1 factors where it's x minus a root of the polynomial to the power of the multiplicity of the root, and then you just have them in a string here. And of course, all of the multiplicities, m1, m2, all the way up to mk, that will add up to the degree of the polynomial n. Okay, so that's just notation. In the next video then, what we will do is prove uh, the existence of a splitting field.